Firefighters of Reddit, what's the dumbest way you've seen someone accidentally start a house fire? The old turkey fryer on the wood deck is always a favorite. Based on the stories from relatives. The answer is by allowing 10 years worth of dryer lint to accumulate inside the machine until it just bursts into flames. It was not an isolated case. This happened this past fall. But a family had a fairy house that was outside. Right next to their Woodside's house. The fairy house was made out of an old tree. And had a bunch of decorations in it. Including incense candles. One evening. They decided that they would light the candles for the fairies. Which then caught the tree on fire. Which then extended into the house. Since it started on the outside. It ran up the side of the house and got into the attic and second floor. The family was home. But in the first floor while this was happening. It wasn't until someone driving on the road saw the smoke and went to alert the family. Luckily. We were able to save the structure. There was a bit of damage to the roof. Attic and second floor. But the homeowners are rebuilding those areas. I am a firefighter but this wasn't in my district. A guy was attempting to forge a sword. TimesUnion.com In a burned barrel in an alley. Based on something he watched on the History Channel. The embers from the forge lit up the building he lived in and destroyed three multi-family residential buildings. Entfernt. Not a house fire. But really good. Late 1980s. Guy was driving an old. Beat up Lincoln. He turned a corner to go up a steep hill. But the road department. Had recently ground the asphalt down in preparation to repave. A storm sewer manhole cover was sticking up about 4 inches. As he went over it and up the hill. The rear of his car dragged due to the pavement height difference and the manhole ripped open his fuel tank and sparked off the gas. Guy described it. I heard a scraping sound. Looked in the mirror. And there was this trail of fire chasing me up the hill. He pulled into a gravel parking lot and tried to kick a brake in the trail before the fire got there. But it jumped the gap and lit the car. By the time we got there. It was a total loss. He actually thought it was kind of funny. The only real loss was his wife's purse. With her license and credit cards. The car was insured. And they got a pretty nice payout for it. Not a firefighter. But the apartment building I lived in at the time caught fire because all my neighbors smoke and throw their cigarette butts into the ground which happened to be fresh mulch before going up the steps. The mulch caught fire which lit the siding on fire. No one's fire alarms went off. Someone driving by saw the smoke. Stopped. Ran and pulled the fire alarm. But it was only connected to the buzzer in the breezeway. Not the fire alarms in the apartments. All bedrooms are in the back of the apartment so no one heard it or woke up. He ran past the flames and banged on everyone's doors to wake people up. Fire department came and put out the fire pretty quick, it never got very big. I also caught the whole thing on my truck's dash cam. But can't find the video now. It was just one more thing that got us to leave apartments for good. Too many stupid people. Family friend decided to make major renovations on their home with no background in construction, carpentry. They also didn't bring a professional to ensure that their renovations were up to fire code. Lo and behold an exposed wire sparked a fire in the middle of the night and burned down their entire home. They have three kids and are very fortunate they all were able to escape the fire without any injuries. To make matters even worse. They had no house insurance, extreme libertarians that don't believe in insurance, debt. So they ended up having to rely on a GoFundMe fundraiser, set up by a relative. But to recover financially. Last I heard. They were still living in a hotel trying to figure out their next plan of action. 
This story alone reaffirms my belief that some things are better left to the professionals. Even if you're trying to cut costs, it might be best to pay a little extra to have someone with experience do something for you instead. This avoids terrible situations like this. They had two candles. And yeah, one thing led to another and they burned down their home gym. Not a firefighter but happened in my building. In India generally you have small praying place in your house. Like a little version of a temple. You lit dia lamp every day and pray there. In this particular case the family decided to keep this thing on a fucking refrigerator. The dia fell behind the fridge due to wind from the window adjacent to it. The condenser caught fire and literally exploded. The whole floor was on fire. Luckily no one was home. It really was a dumb decision to keep a temple on a fucking fridge. In college a girl in the dorms was making popcorn which, not sure how but somehow, caught fire in the microwave. She didn't want to get into trouble for it so she grabbed the flaming bag of popcorn and threw it into the nearby trash can. Then proceeded to cover the fire with paper towels to smother it. She actually thought it would work. It did not work. I came back exhausted after work to find the dorm building surrounded by fire trucks. In the city of Colorado Springs, the local news did a fluff piece about candle safety near Christmas. After they were done filming, the store owner that they were filming in took the crew out to breakfast. She didn't put out the candles and burned several shops to the ground. The film crew was there to film her breakdown when they realized what caused the fire. Not a firefighter, but I set my parents' bathroom on fire while getting up from the toilet. My mom used to leave potpourri simmering in a small bowl on the back of the toilet with a candle to heat. Stew it just below. As I was getting up I somehow knocked the apparatus off the back of the commode. We had carpet floors in that bathroom and that section of the floor caught pretty quickly. The fire then found a seam in the wallpaper and ignited the glue fairly easily as well. As the flames rose, it caught the roll of toilet paper on the way up the wall which really accelerated things. All this took less than 30 seconds and I remember being somewhat mesmerized at the path the flames traveled. I also remembered that I had flushed the toilet before realizing what had happened. I somehow thought to grab the toilet bowl brush, shove it into the commode to get it wet, and then beat out the flames. The aftermath was surprisingly minimal. The small section of carpet was destroyed, but my parents replaced the carpet everywhere a few years later. The wallpaper wiped clean with some hot water and a rag. And thankfully there was only a little permanent smoke damaged on the ceiling which has seemed to fade over time. So. Here in Argentina we have El Cordero a la Cruz. A.K.A. cooking a whole lamb with open fire. Well. It just so happens that pines are really flammable. And. If you make an unprotected fire in a. Floor covered in pine leaves near a blooming pine. Not a firefighter but the apt building I stayed in had a pretty good fire. Guy threw a lit cigarette in a coffee can full of butts. It was on the far end of the building from us. So my upstairs neighbor and I got to stay. Everyone else had to move. We were dealing with water leaks for almost a year after that. It took them that long to sort out insurance stuff and make repairs. Finally put on a new roof a few weeks before we moved. Not sure if this counts. But I nearly lit my house on fire trying to smoke toilet paper. I was a chef before I was on a volunteer fire department for a bit and this was at a restaurant down the street from my old one. Cooks at this restaurant forgot to plug the drain in the deep fryer. So what happened was they put oil in a fryer which drained immediately, right before lunch, turned on the empty fryer, and that's when the coils caught fire. Gallons of oil, burn a fryer, 
fill a restaurant with smoke and kill the service day. This was the second time it happened. Edit. Grammar fixes. Clarity. News article 1 read. One guy had a fish bowl in his garden shed. Sunlight was focused through the bowl. Through his kitchen window. Fuumph. Fu Someone tried to make a gummy bear lamp like in iCarly to test it really gonna burn. And then. His house was on fire. Not a firefighter but I read a story about a woman that started a fire because her firefighter friends were bored. Firefighter here. One extremely cold night the temperature was minus 11 wind chills minus 40s. This guy tries starting a fire in his fireplace and couldn't get it started. He decides to use gasoline. Dumps one half gallon on the firewood stacked by the door and the other one half onto the wood in the fireplace. As he attempted to light the fire he couldn't get the lighter to work. Now the vapors are really starting to build. He then goes to the kitchen which adjoins the room with the fireplace to use the stove to light some newspaper. As soon as he turned the on the stove the igniter lit the gasoline vapors. The living room was instantly on fire. The vapors singed all his hair and got first degree burns on his hands and face. We on the other hand spent the next few hours in the extreme cold. Flash ahead three hours. The firewood outside has somehow ignited and we have to go back. The second fire had some time to really grow. Middle or the night. Everyone in bed no one around. Longest coldest night of my life. All because some fool decided to use gasoline to start a fire indoors. My father lived in a rented apartment. The landlord lived in the apartment beneath him. My father had switched the fuse off the oven off. Because he had done some electrical work. He also put some receipts on the oven. In the meantime, the landlord saw the flipped off fuse located on the basement. And flipped it on. We wondered why it smelled burned and we discovered that the oven was on. And had burned the paper to ash. Amazing It did not really burn. The paper just utnrd to ash. You could even still read some words. But if you touched it. It just turned to dust. I worked for a restoration company. A family cut a small tree down and tried to stuff it up their fireplace to burn. The flute was so crammed with leaves that smoke started to fill the living room. They tried to pull the tree out and that's when it really caught fire. They tried to pull it out of the house. They got as far as the front door. All of them had second, third degree burns on their hands, arms and the fire destroyed the front room and entryway of their house. The insurance company asked us if we thought it was a case of fraud. And we told them, no these people are just really stupid. My neighbors recently burned their house down emptying an ashtray before they went to bed. They have since quit smoking. My uncle is a firefighter. The answer is Christmas trees. They dry out. They become a ticking time bomb. He used to do an annual demonstration where he'd let a Christmas tree dry out for a few months then take it outside and ignite it. The flames would shoot 40 feet in the air and the tree would be gone in a few seconds. It was mightily impressive to behold. And I'm sticking with artificial trees. There was a spider. Not a firefighter and it wasn't in a house but on a certain mall here in Monterey. Mexico. We have a freaky plaza, a little mall where all the geeks, gamers and Odicus go to. And on the second floor someone was smoking while playing Yu-Gi-Oh. Since he didn't wanted to throw his ashes on the floor and the trash can was too far away from him. He decided to make a paper ashtray. Yeah. That didn't work out well. Especially when three of his friends decided to use it too was in my local paper. Turned out to be my friend's older brother. He tried to smoke out bees in the loft and set fire to the insulation in the loft and burnt the whole house down. Teenager was charcoal grilling in the attached garage during the winter. 
when done he decided the best place to dispose of the hot coals was into a cardboard box in front corner of the garage closest to the house. Yeah. It went about as well as you can imagine. My dad was a firefighter. And he once went to a house fire that was started by the old lady who lived there. She liked to burn candles. But didn't like the wax buildup that would form in the cavity. So she would soak up the liquid wax with a napkin. She was doing this when she accidentally brushed a wax-soaked napkin up against the flame. She panicked and threw the napkin into the trash. Dot. Dot. Where all the other wax napkins were. As the trash can exploded into flames she fled the house. But not before she went to her oxygen tanks and flooded the house with pure oxygen. Because she thought that it would smother the fire. My father was a Boston firefighter for 30 plus years. One of his more memorable stories was a foreign family who had ripped up their cast iron bathtub and built an open flame underneath the tub. They used the tub as a giant oil fryer. Naturally this didn't work out very well and the house caught fire. To add to the insanity even more, the family absolutely refused to let my dad and his co-workers in without taking their boots off. Which of course, they couldn't agree to. Just crazy. A Roomba knocked a scented candle over and set fire to the rest of the room. The guy said he knew the Roomba did it because he watched the whole thing happen. But didn't do anything because he thought it was funny. Forgetting to close the bottom of your grill then going overboard with the lighter fluid. A fairly common one. But the response was interesting. Early February. Western PA. Guy's pipes freeze on the coldest day of the year. 8F. He tries to thaw them with a propane torch. Sets the wall on fire. Tries to put the fire out. Fails. Finally calls 911. Fire chief is one half block away. Is on scene in under a minute. Basement is fully involved. Main floor catching. First engine arrives in under five minutes. Doors are blocked by fire. Exterior attack only. I'm on an attack line. Spraying water into the second floor window. After 40 minutes. Another firefighter comes to relieve me. But since I'd been getting back spray. I'm frozen to the ground. He has to pull me loose. Two hours later. We have it knocked down. The insurance adjuster shows up. Asked. Chief explains what started the fire. Adjuster replies. Oh. Yeah. We know. It's okay. We insure for stupid. Nobody got hurt. Family gets a much nicer house out of the deal.